I'm super, super grateful for it because I think that just over time, like it's it's hard to find your space, mm-hmm. like or your spot as a you know as a lady in any gaming community. Yeah. Um, and it just goes, you know, the fact that we have our own team and we have events and everything like that. It just really goes to show how many of us are there and we enjoy the game and we're just as capable of, you know, yeah. doing everything else. And um, everybody in the community is so nice. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we're all supportive of each other. And I think that is just, it's super important. Hey, she's a beauty. Welcome to Tardux, a podcast for content creators to come on, share their stories, advice, and today I have Echo. Welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on. Really appreciate it. I know how busy, you know, being a content creator is, you know, every it's, it's just so much more than just playing games. It is. Yes. <laughs> you know, people are I'm oh, happy to be. Oh, good. Yeah, it's just, yeah, you just don't play video games all day. There's so much more to that. Yes, it really is. Yeah. All right. So before we uh, get rolling, we normally start off with three random questions. So uh, to warm things up, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. So one, uh, number one, what's the best thing about where you live? Best thing about where I live? Uh, all my family's here. All right. Perfect. And yep. <laughs> um, how many cats does one need to own be- before being considered a crazy cat person? There's no such thing. There's no limit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sure people will argue that, but I'm a cat person. You might have some arguments there, yes. But anyway. And what do they say? Is it the if the cats outnumber the amount of people that that's the limit? I don't know. I feel like I've heard something like that. Yes, I've heard something like that. Well, you know, we're a dog household here. We've had cats, but we're up to three dogs right now, and there's four of us, so we're still we're still okay. I think we, so. We are not. There's three cats and two of us, so we're Oh, <laughs> we're yes. Okay. Numbered. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. What are their names? Uh, we have Rue and Ember, who are sisters, yeah. and then Loki is our kitten. Um, well, he's 10, 10 months now, but yeah. he is uh, our youngest. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. We had uh, siblings a while ago. When we first moved down here to Connecticut, we had uh, rescued two cats that were lost. Uh, you know, they were out in a winter storm and they were a uh, brother and sister. So we named them Luke and Leia. Oh yeah. All right. And third question. So last good movie or TV show you watched? Ooh, um, the last movie I watched, I know I'm really behind on this was actually interstellar Oh, okay. and it was so good. Have you seen it? Yes, it is really oh, good. So good. Yeah. Um, and then last good TV show. We, restarted the walking dead oh yes because we didn't finish it before and we have one episode left that's (laughs) it yeah yeah. oh wow yeah i the first few seasons were so good and then yeah i i think it turns the when they brought in negan that you know when Mm -hmm. they exposed negan i thought that was going to be really cool and then it was just like Rick and Negan, it was like they couldn't, you know, it was like a, I don't know, I'm dating myself here, but it was like an episode of the A-Team. They fired so many shots at each other, but never got killed. And it's just, they dragged that out so long. Yeah. Yeah. And we're, you know, it's at the point where we're like, well, we, we just need to finish it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's been, there's been a lot and there's just a lot of points where people just like disappear in mm-hmm. the seasons and you're like, we haven't heard from this person in ages. Where are they? So yeah, yeah I guess we're still, we're close. We're yeah. close to finishing it. Excellent. All right. So, um, welcome to the podcast. So happy you're here. And uh, yep. first thing we do is, uh, or actually, we've already done the questions, but who was Echo before you found the go live button? What did you do? So, I have been streaming on Twitch for close to a decade. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> yeah, just, it was nine years this year. Yeah. Um, so, I. I was actually working in a restaurant, and I was a hardcore WoW player. Oh, wow. Um, I worked as a server in a restaurant, and I just played WoW. That's pretty much all I did. 
Where did video games start? Video games started, I played video games when I was a kid, Yeah. but not a ton. Um, when I was 18, I was introduced to World of Warcraft. Yeah. And that was my first PC game. Oh, wow. Okay. And it's all downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> And then over the years, what have been some of your you know more favorite games that you've you've found and you know, sunk a lot of time into? I am a very I WoW was one of them. Yeah. Once I found WoW, that's like one of the only games I really played for a long time, and I still play it. Yeah. Um, and then maybe it was around the end of 2013 when i found out about like early 2014 when i found about about daisy yeah and that's that's also just a very my, my most two two played games wow yeah. and daisy and i've played a few things over the years but for the most part i've really stuck to mostly just wow and daisy yeah oh wow and now what what was the reason you hit the go live button to begin with so at the time i was in a like hardcore, I guess what you call a raiding guild, where we were trying to push higher ranks and be competitive. So I was playing WoW five, six nights a week and raiding. Um, at the time, there was a long time ago on Twitch, you could password protect streams, so yeah. people could do like a like a private stream essentially, and there'd be a password, and then someone could put in the password and we would do that for our raiders that were on the bench who oh, wanted okay. to watch the fight. So I started streaming World of Warcraft to start and it was mostly just to show the fight perspective to people mm -hmm. who were sitting out for that particular uh, pool. Yeah. And I would have my other guildmates and stuff in the stream and it kind of started turning into where other people were coming in. So one of my friends in the guild, he said, well, Hey, like I do graphic design, you know, I could make you a few little things for your stream. Yeah. And it kind of just kept evolving from there. <laughs> oh, wow. And now when you, you know, people started to come into your stream who didn't have the password and it was more open to the public, you know, what, what was that like? It's got to be so weird. Those first people come in, you don't know who they are. And, and even back then on Twitch, you it was like the wild west that I've heard stories about. I honestly didn't expect it because when I started streaming, I wasn't streaming with any intention to grow or yeah. make it be a thing um and it just it was very exciting it yeah. was really exciting because i'd watch streamers you know for years some of the old school people like yeah. Derek and dan and stuff like that and i never really expected anything from it but it was really like i still remember where i was in wow someone was like you should put up a donation button yeah and i was like oh okay i i sure i guess and my first tip ever was a $10 donation. And I remember exactly where I was in WoW and everything, like, on the map. And that was just so crazy to me. It was, yeah. you know, I never expected it. <laughs> <laughs> and now, you know, over the 10 years, what have, you know, what have been some of the harder things about, you know, going live still? Um, I would say probably overall, and I, I would say maybe everybody kind of has this, but... Um, I think we all just have a pressure to do well yeah. in whatever we do, even if you don't expect. I think when I first started streaming, maybe that was it was so easy because I had no expectations. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just you know uh, being too hard on myself or others yeah. being too hard on themselves. So I, I that's one thing I like have to try to constantly remind myself of, like, hey, you know, it's take a day at a time, and yeah. you know. Put your hard work in and everything else will follow. All right. Excellent. And now back, you know, so Twitch has grown a lot since that first time you went go live. You know, what are, yeah. um, you know, what are some of the, you know, milestones over the years, some big moments that you remember over Twitch that like, oh, wow, I, they gave us, you know, the part was, when did the partner aspect of it come into place or other features that like, oh my God, finally we've got this feature we can now, you know, whether it was modding tools or things like that. Um, so I, I got partnered, um, I started streaming in February of 2014. And then, um, I think, I think that was, I'm not sure of the exact timeline, but I think it wasn't too long after it swapped over from Justin TV, maybe yeah. less than a year. So it was still really early on becoming a partner back then was way different. Yeah. Um, and there was no affiliate. Yeah. 
And I got really lucky. I met somebody through another streamer. His name was Chase, and he was uh, someone who worked at Twitch. And he was starting a program, essentially, and Twitch was backing him on it, where he would find up-and-coming streamers. Yeah. um, And then he would essentially be their... um, What is the word I'm looking for? Like Like their... Manager or... Yeah, like you could use him as a reference, I guess. So he would give like the green light. He would come watch your stream, kind of vet your stream out and see how you're growing, see how you conducted your stream. And then if he liked what, you know, what you had going on and felt like you would, you know, continue working hard and growing, then he would say, hey, if you apply for partner, you can put me on there. Yeah. And Twitch will partner you. Oh, wow. So that's how I got partnered, (laughs) (laughs) Um, which is kind of, and I don't think anything like that has ever existed Ooh. since yeah um and i think you know once after that like affiliate came which i think was great because the requirements back then i think i don't i think it was something like 500 concur- concurrent to get partners oh wow like that. it was crazy high that that may be wrong yeah. number wise <laughs> but <laughs> it was high it was a lot higher um and i was still pretty new i got partnered in May yeah. of the same year I started streaming, so like six six months maybe. And now, was how did you end up finding out you got partnered? You know, like some people remember the moment they got that, you know, the email or somebody came into their chat and from Twitch and said, "Hey, congrats" or something like that. Yeah, I got the email. Oh, okay. <laughs> was, yeah, it was really exciting. Even though it, I guess I don't know, I kind of knew it was coming, right? Because Chase had said, "Hey." you know, put me on there. So, yeah. but it still doesn't take away from how exciting it is because back then, you know, that was the only way for you to get emotes and, right. And, uh, have anything like that. So yeah. it was, it was really cool. Oh, wow. And now over the years, you've, you know, when did you take this as a, you know, full-time content creation career? So at the time when I started streaming, I worked in a restaurant yeah. And I had worked there for a long time, so I was really lucky to have a cool manager that as my stream was continuing to grow and pick up, um, I went from full-time serving down to part-time once my stream was picking up a bit more. And then it just kind of kept growing and growing, and um, I feel like taking the leap to full-time is such a scary scary thing um, for a lot of people because, you know, that's it's it's hard to really gauge – uh, streaming wise, because it's so inconsistent, like if that's going to be viable. Um, but for about six or seven months, I was making enough money streaming to support myself. Yeah. So I realized then that I could, I was lucky when my manager said, Hey, he put me just on call. I went from yeah. full time to part time, and then I went to on call only. And that way I still had my job yeah. if I needed it. Then it got to the point where I was like, I think I'm, I think I'm okay. And then, yeah, then I was full time from there on out. That's awesome. And yeah. now, were there certain moments along the way, certain milestones you hit? It's like, oh yeah, I could, you know, things happen where like all of a sudden a big rate happened, your viewership went up, or just it was just a gradual increase in your community, and you, you just got to the point where yeah, I got this. Yeah, definitely. It was it was gradual. Started on Wow, and I feel like. Twitch was much less saturated back Mm -hmm. then. Um, I also really looked up to some streamers, like one of them is Dizzy Kitten. Yeah. And how she ran her stream. She was very interactive, very talkative with chat. And that was something that I really wanted to do. And I feel like back then it wasn't as common for people to be interactive. Yeah. So I think that was something that really worked in my benefit is that being interactive with chat kind of stuck out. and. Uh, that really helped grow my stream because I'd get comments all the time like, wow, you actually talk to stream. You're so talkative. And that was really different back then. And yeah. so that helped me grow a lot. And um, then I swapped to Daisy. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was a full-time Daisy streamer. And Daisy was, the Daisy community was honestly a huge factor in my growth. That's yeah. when I really start, started my seeing my stream grow a ton was when I was just primarily in Daisy. Yeah. Oh, okay. And now, how how nervous were you switching from a main game, your main game, WoW, and then, you know, over to Daisy? Was it a, you know, just a, a hard switch, or did you just gradually mix in Daisy with WoW? I mixed it for a while yeah. because it's it's funny because my the way I found out about Daisy, 
I didn't play the mod, um, yeah. but one of my guildmates in WoW kept missing raid. <laughs> and they were just like always gone. And we're like, mm -hmm. where are you? Like, where you been? <laughs> He's like, I'm playing this awesome new game called DayZ. And we were like, what's DayZ? And I didn't know, I wasn't familiar with the armor mod. Yeah. So another guildmate in mine, um, we hopped on standalone, like when it first pretty much came out. Yeah. And that was when I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. This is so fun. And so I was kind of doing WoW and DayZ. And then I I realized that I was having more fun playing DayZ. I was, you know, sh playing WoW hardcore. And uh, I was streaming WoW. But then at the time, streaming WoW, I don't want to say competitively, but strats back then were a little bit more like, Oh, we don't want to watch have other guilds like CR strats. So yeah, uh, my guild didn't really want me streaming progression. Oh, okay. So I actually quit playing WoW for a while, and just went completely over to Daisy, and just had a had a grip on me. A gri what is that a grip on me? <laughs> <laughs> and back to your um, you were talking about you know being a interactive streamer. I guess yeah, back then. People were just really watching Twitch just for gameplay, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, when did you, cause when did you start watching Twitch? Uh, honestly, maybe two years ago when, okay. you know, I, I yeah. so my path to what I do here now is I found the uh, the game Escape from Tarkov. Oh, it was Tarkov, okay. Yeah, and I just, it, it just grabbed me like no other game has ever had. And then I started, you know, looking for videos and just Twitch. And before that, I was like, who in the world watches people play video games? Like, come on. And and then sure enough, it's like, oh, I get it now why people are. So and then yeah. over the, you know, my first iteration of, of the podcast was really to get content creators from Tarkov people and, and share their stories. And then it moved out into some Fortnite people, Daisy. And it's just like, this is just really really cool and you know that's how we ended up here today that's awesome yeah. yeah i mean it's interesting how it all kind of evolves from that right and i feel like streaming is kind of the same thing too yeah. in a sense yeah yeah because it was it was very uncommon for people to be very interactive it's just watching people play yeah i mean and people were interactive but it just i feel like the twitch kind of not meta but just the way that things are now is that most people are interactive unless they're you know maybe like a quite a big larger streamer type yeah. deal okay and now you know over the years what's been some of the highlights for you that you look back is like wow i can't believe that happened or i was able to do this um one of my biggest highlights is um i got invited to an arc tournament uh this was in 2015 yeah and I, I played a little bit of ARC. ARC was still pretty new. Yeah. And I got an email and was like, hey, we're starting a new uh, game mode. It's called Survival of the Fittest. It's like a BR. And I was like, well, you know, I play mostly DayZ, and I, but I love BR games. So, yeah, I guess I would be down for that. And I'm really glad I did. Um, it was 75 streamers, and yeah. they pulled teams out of a hat. Okay. And there was streamers of all sizes. And I think at the time... I had about 50,000 followers, but just primarily Daisy content, so it was a little out of the realm of what I do. But yeah. I got partnered with Lyric. Oh, no way. And, yeah, I was fangirled so hard because I'd been watching him for years. <laughs> <laughs> I'd been watching. He was one of the first streamers I ever watched, like, back in the day. Uh, I was so nervous. Um, but I, uh, be I was teammates with him for the event, and we ended up doing really well, and that was a massive, massive thing for my channel. That was really um, it, an experience that I, I yeah. honestly cannot explain. Uh, because, I mean, at the time I was, you know, I, my stream was doing well, but yeah. I think there's a completely different bracket of having 20,000 viewers when you're used to a couple hundred. Right. Uh, it, was, it was crazy. Oh, my God. And, uh, and back then, you know, did they, back when you started, did, when did the raid ability happened that was that out of the gates or was that something that was added to twitch over the you know a few years later it was added but you know i honestly can't remember when it was added um because raiding back then was spamming a, a link in chat and saying hey everybody go over oh, here okay yeah and then you'd send everybody over there but it was an automatic thing and yeah you know honestly i like that too though because it 
you'd get these huge raids of people, and that means every single person clicked on that link and right. went over and made the effort to, you know, raid somebody and make their day. Yeah. Um, but, I, you know, I, I can't remember when when it happened, because I, I actually took a break from yeah. streaming in Daisy. Um, and I think it might have come around the time I was gone. Oh, okay. Now, what, you know, because that's being raided by, you know, you go from X to triple X. That is quite a, a shock to, you know, people who are just starting out. Do you remember mm. your first big raid? Yeah, my first big raid was um, from <laughs> it's from a WoW streamer named Swifty. Mm -hmm. And there was always this, it was like this thing of, oh, a Swifty raid. Like, that's life-changing. Yeah. Um, and I remember I was pushing at the time for 500 followers. Mm -hmm. And I got Swifty raided, and, you know, that's hundreds of thousands of people. And I just remember thinking, oh, my gosh, like... I was so, like sweating, like yeah. so nervous <laughs> having all those people because you know I was used to just having a few people in my right. channel, and um, I think maybe at the time I was like you know five viewers or something yeah. like that. So it was, uh, yeah, it was huge. I remember that a lot. <laughs> awesome. And now, if somebody was starting out for the first time and they're going to go live and and try to you know make this as you know a career or, or a path for them, what what kind of advice would you give them? Um, whenever I give advice for someone starting out, I think the biggest thing I usually say, and it sounds so easy to do, is don't hang, get hung up on the numbers. Yeah. Um, I think that streaming, especially nowadays on Twitch, right? Because Twitch is just, there's so many people who are essentially all trying to do the same thing. Right. Whether it's for fun or they're for doing it for growth or anything. Um, but be yourself and have fun, you know, play games that you enjoy. Uh, I think there's like a hard kind of spot where people are trying to grow and they're trying to, you have to kind of balance like things that you enjoy. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, if you're playing a game that has on average 100,000 viewers, you're, you know, you're going to get lost. So you have to kind of sometimes balance that. But if you're having fun, the people who come in your stream will have fun. And yeah. you're not forcing... Uh, some sort of game to be played or you're not forcing something in hopes that it's going to grow, like people will notice that. So, yeah. you know, turn off your viewer count and stay consistent. I think consistency is probably one of the biggest things. Stay consistent, enjoy yourself and uh, don't compare yourself to others. I think that's something we all yeah. do. Probably human nature, right? Right. Um, but it is, uh, you know, hard work and consistency, but also fun and uh, not getting hub hung up on things. Well, everything will fall in line at some point. Like yeah. you'll, you will grow regardless, maybe at your own pace, you know, it may be different than someone else's pace, yeah. but it will happen. Yeah. Excellent. I think something that people don't realize is, you know, the mental strain that this can take on you because you're sitting yeah. by yourself and if you're not, you know, if you're not playing with somebody else and interacting with them, it's really you and chat eight hours or whatever, you know, eight to 10 hours, you really mm -hmm. don't have that human, human contact. And if you're, you know, grinding five to six days a week, there's, you need to take yeah. some breaks. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Cause it's easy to get burnout. Yeah. I think like content creation burnout is a huge thing and it's easy to do and you know, when you're trying to grow your stream or do anything like that, there's no, and I think that's the hard time, even when you are full time, is that it doesn't really ever end, right? Right? Like you can, you could stream 70 hours a week and still feel like you could do more. There's no structure to where it says you do X amount of this, you're going to get this. Yeah. Um. So it kind of never stops. And that's why I think it's so easy for people to push themselves yeah. and get burnt out yeah. and it happens. Yeah. And it's, it's a fine line you, you're, you're doing because you're doing something you love. There's a passion for it, but there's that, you know, finds like where, oh my God, I'm not on stream right now. I should be on stream because I'm missing viewers and things like that. It's, right. it's a tough balance you have to do. Right. Yeah, exactly. Or, I mean, I know for me, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not putting enough content out on other platforms. Yeah. Like I need to be, I need to be posting here. I need to be posting there because you can always be doing more. Mm -hmm. But that's when people say, oh, like what's, you know, one of the tips of starting out is I tell people like, even if you're not streaming six days a week, cause you can't, cause some people are like, I don't have the time. Right. And that's fair. 
But as long as you stick to something, even if it's two days a week, as long as you're consistent in those two days, yeah. it's still going to be more helpful than you trying to do six days and then you can't and then you burn out. Yeah. Um, just setting small goals that work for yourself and then working towards them. Yeah. And then the other aspect of this too that, you know, I've, with all the people I've had on is when you take this full time, you, you know, you don't get holidays, you don't get sick days. You've got to try to Mm -hmm. work that in and balance that in. So again, you don't burn out. Like, you know, you've do, you've been doing this for so long. How have you been sort of able to sort of, you know, sprinkle the mental health days in or take vacations and whatnot? Because when you come back, everybody says, you know, they go for, go, they're gone for a week. They come back. It's a, a, you know, they got to climb back up to get where, where they left off. Yeah. And I think there's that, it's kind of like a, um, it's like a FOMO, Mm -hmm. but like also kind of, you know, like in a different sense, because it's, it is. And I mean, I saw it big time when I I took a three-year break and having to regrow after a three-year break was like, I was starting over almost. Um, So I think there is that stress that, you know, if you're not consistent enough, um, you know, it's going to hurt you. But I was five days a week and I actually went down to four at the beginning of the year. And that was really hard for me because I was like, well, that's, you know, that's a day that I'm not, I'm not visible to people's eyes. Um, but it's just then taking that extra day for myself to do things, Yeah. but staying as consistent as possible on those days that I am on. And I feel like once you accept, or at least for me, once I've accepted like, Hey, I needed that day. I can be good to myself. It's just talking. Maybe for me, it's just talking myself into it. I'm like, (laughs) you need this day. You're going to take it. Because I'm so, I feel so guilty. Some days I'll, you know, have a day off where I'm like, well, I should have done something for this. And then I didn't. I just did whatever during the day. You feel that guilt. But I think you have to remember that you're one person doing so many things. Like as a streamer, you're producing your stream, you know, maybe you're editing you're entertaining, you're, there's so much upkeep to a stream that I think a lot of people don't realize because it's not just get on, go live stream. There's so, you know, going through clips after posting on social media, creating schedules, you know, Daisy, there's, you know, getting ready for events. There's so many different things that, you know, go along with just streaming. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's also the network aspect of, you know, coordinating with who you're going to play with and things like that. Yeah, very true. Yeah. And uh, you know, you're actually the first guest I've had on in the 80 something people I've had on that actually has taken a a break between, you know, going live and and then taking a break and coming back. What was that like for you to, you know, when you said, "Okay, I'm taking a break." You know, did you miss it or was it something that I just needed to get away from streaming? Um, it was it was a few it was a combination of a few things. Yeah. I Daisy at the time was kind of at a, at a low. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've been curious at, at later on, I looked back and looked at the concurrent player count of Daisy and and it was, it was really low at the time that I stopped playing Daisy. I think I was a bit frustrated with the game and I hate to say it, you know, I love Daisy. It's my most played game of all time. But at the, at the time, um, I was just playing a bit more casually than I had before. Mm -hmm. And I had made the decision to go back to school to be a nurse. Yeah. Um, and I knew that I would have to dial my stream down to part time. Yeah. And, you know, that also then arises like the really hard question that at that time I've been streaming full time for four years. But I think one of the hardest things about streaming full time is knowing when it is viable yeah. and when it isn't. Um, and that's a hard realization to say, yeah. I'm not making enough money to do this full time because I had to cut down my stream schedule in order to go back to school. Yeah. Um, and so I made that tough decision of, okay, well, I'm going to school, which means I also need a job. <laughs> yeah. I need to, I need to work. And right. with me cutting down my stream schedule so much, it just wasn't as viable as yeah. it had been prior. Um, so I got a part-time job and then, you know, just as much as I was trying to keep up with streaming, I was just burnt out yeah school work stream Mm -hmm. um and slowly that just like streaming just kind of faded out because it was you know the one thing that I could kind of do on my own time but then I found that I didn't have my own time to do it yeah um Um, so it was a hard realization and I missed I missed it a lot and I tried to stream when I could but it was just busy schedule 
And now when you came back, what was that like? Did, you know, were your friends that you, when you left, were they still streaming and were those creators still around? And then you came back and it was just like picking up from where you left off or was it a tough, you know, I'm starting from sort of nothing really. Uh, it was incredibly nerve wracking. Yeah. It was, I was, I'm very lucky that I, I have a core, uh, you know, community that mm -hmm. stuck with me, even though I wasn't streaming. I, you know, I still had people sub to me and I still had people yeah. who, when I did stream, they'd come out and I'm so grateful for those people. Um, but the group of people that I played with on Daisy back in the day, um, they were doing other things. Um, or maybe, you know, maybe we weren't talking anymore. Yeah. So a lot happens in three years. Yeah. And I feel like Twitch years are kind of like dog years. Where yes. <laughs> you know, three years is longer than three years to right. not be around. Yeah. Um, so coming back, I actually told myself that I wasn't going to be a Daisy streamer primarily because yeah. I think when you are when you're a single game streamer, it is really hard to then do anything else. Mm -hmm. um, so I came back actually just wanting to do variety games, yeah. and I was pretty out of the loop on Daisy. I hadn't really played it, you know, at all in that that time period, mm -hmm. and so much had changed. And I remember I went into uh, a stream, Kadiak stream. I was just browsing the category and yeah. she was on there and I didn't know who she was. And I clicked in and she was playing Namalsk and I was like, oh my God, there's a winter <laughs> It's like, this looks incredible. And she would kill someone with a Gauss rifle. And I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. <laughs> and I was like, well, maybe I should try out Daisy again. It's been so long. Yeah. Daisy was my life before. Um, so I came back to Daisy and I mean, I didn't know anybody really. M majority of the people who I new in the community yeah. or like the streaming community of daisy changed almost completely yeah oh wow so yeah it was it was a big big change <laughs> <laughs> oh, i bet and now did you know community mem old community members come back or really you had you know built your community you rebuilt your community again yeah yeah i mean i i was lucky to to have a, a chunk of people and and it's one of those things about, I guess, for me, like, I think back to it's all about perspective because yeah. I know growing on, on Twitch is so hard and, you know, people are out there trying to make affiliate and trying to make partner. Mm -hmm. And when I came back, I I had probably about 40 to 50 viewers. Yeah. Um, And I mean, that's that's huge for, you know, being gone. And oh, absolutely. You know, I'm that's... very grateful for that. Yeah. Yeah. Because but I think it's a. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, for, to come back and, you know, averaging 40 to 50, people starting out today, that takes a couple of years possibly for them to get up there. So that's that was a nice thing to come back to. Yeah, definitely. And, I'm, and you know, and it's it's one of those things that's, that's hard. You know, this is what I'm saying, like, about perspective, I guess, because when I was streaming Daisy full-time, I was, um, you know, much, much higher than that. And I think that's sometimes a hard thing to... Yeah. To think, you know, people come in, they see how many followers they have, and they're like, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> but like I said, you know, three years away is is a long time in Twitch in Twitch time. So I pretty much just, um, yeah, started rebuilding and yeah. um, meeting new people in the Daisy community. And there was a few viewers who recognized me from back in the day, but the viewership also, a lot of new people got introduced to Daisy over the past few years. Yeah. So a lot of people had no idea who I was and, you know, really just kind of started, you know, being consistent and, you know, doing my thing, I guess, yeah. and ah. finding new people. Awesome. And now... When now, when you came back and you're know, streaming Daisy, were you also comfortable just switching into other games as well, or did you really just go back to maining Daisy at that time? Um, I pretty much went kind of just went back to Daisy, yeah, but I think that's mostly because it I just fell in love with it again. Yeah. I when I stopped playing, there was no modding, yeah. there was the old player control, it was still just Chernaris, the only map, yeah. So to come back and be like, wow, I can play all these crazy maps and there's mods like yeah. that. I just wanted to try out the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And then I just, I've been addicted again. Ever since. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
and actually going back to talk about you know being a, you know streaming full time and, and you know mm-hmm. the difficulties of it there's something that people don't realize you have to be on you can't be miserable you've yeah. got to want to be there and and that's you know cuz somebody's not going to stick around to listen to somebody who's complaining and whatnot yeah yeah that's a huge thing and i think that because i i feel like there's always that like well you play video games for a living you're so lucky 100% yeah. very lucky i will i will never deny that but there is definitely that mental strain because you want to want to be to a caliber where people want to come back, whether it's right. that you're funny or you're good at the game or a mixture or whatever you have to bring as, you know, that's entertaining enough for people want to stay. Yeah. But everybody has off days. And even though the core people in your stream know what you're capable of. Yeah. Like your stream also needs to grow and Mm -hmm. that's going to be new people coming in. If you're having an off day and people, you know, they come in and they're like, what is this person doing? (laughs) And I think uh, that's probably one of the things that maybe stresses me out like more, you know, the most, especially with a game like Daisy, because you can just have really bad days where nothing is on your side. Um, The game, regardless, is about skill and all that, but also is a lot of luck. I think more than maybe people realize. So you could just have the worst luck and you have a bad day. Everybody has bad days on the game, but you're broadcasting that to people right? and trying to also be entertaining and be interactive and everything all together. Yeah. And then, and then at the end of the day, when you sign off or you turn it, you know, go off, you know, you kill the, the, the stream, you're just like drained. You're most people are probably drained because you've been talking, you've been reading chat and everything like that. It's, it's, it is, it's a draining, draining thing to do. It is. Yeah. It's definitely mentally draining. And you just, at the, at the end, I'm like, Oh, I don't want to do anything. I just want to like stare at a TV or yeah. go to bed or do something because it takes a lot more out of you than, yeah. than a lot of people think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I had one content creator on and he's, you know, he has kids and he has his wife and he goes, when I'm done, my wife knows not to come in for an hour. I just lay down and quiet and I don't want to talk to anybody. And it's like, I totally yeah. get that. Yeah. 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 You just need to woo saw for a little bit. And, yeah. you know, especially depending on how long you stream mm-hmm. and it's your, you know, you're like Daisy too. There's always something going on. You got to be hyper aware of what's going on yeah. around you, especially if you're trying to like play well and mm-hmm. everything like that. And then you're paying attention to the stream while you're focusing and trying not to get killed for eight plus hours right. or however long you're playing. And yeah, it could be, it could be a lot. Definitely. Yeah. I, I agree. And you know, the, the thing about Daisy is like, you just, you know, brought up a good point is like, you could have a character that could last for, you know, days, weeks, maybe even a month or two. And you know, you really can't just mail it in because you don't want to you you probably come tied to that character in that adventure yeah oh yeah i had my longest character life recently was when uh the deer isle patch came out mm-hmm. on the map and there was a bunch of new content and um my friend doc and i were were doing it together so and we, we do 12 hours on fridays every friday together yeah. and we every friday we were like, okay, we, there's so many steps. Like, the whole process to do everything on the map, um, on, on plus on a full server, it's 60 people, yeah. and it's always full, and you can die any time, and it takes so much time to do everything, and, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, you're streaming, and you're, you know, paying attention to everything. I think my character lived for the entire Daisy patch. Oh, wow. And it was, like, almost 70 hours worth of playtime yeah. on that character to do everything. Yeah. And it... But that's stressful, too, because you're like, well, I've already put 60 hours in this character. Right. <laughs> and, and, you know, I could lose all of my progression. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, you know, and then also streaming that, it can be really, really deflating to have something going for a long time. And then you yeah. lose it and you're like, oh, well, oof, uh, yeah, that hurts. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then, OK, I got to keep my smile on because, <laughs> you know, some new viewer is going to come in and see me. Right. Yeah. No, absolutely. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Because I don't I I. I and I mean, maybe you've heard, you know, talked about this with Tarkov and, you know, but the term like gear fear, mm-hmm. right? Oh, yes. Like, <laughs> yeah, because I don't, I don't get gear fear in Daisy. Yeah. I get, I get a uh, stuff gear, yeah. like, like of if I'm doing a big, 
objective, like on, on Deer Isle, where I have to go and get a key card and I have to go get a full NBC suit. Maybe getting that full NBC suit took me, you know, 10 hours to yeah. find all the parts. I'm not a, like really, you know, on a normal character, like a gun. I'm not really attached to that. I'm, yeah. I'm attached to the stuff that takes me so long to get. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> <That's> a, yeah. <laughs> and now you mentioned the name Doc. Now, a little birdie told me you were practicing for this podcast with Doc. <laughs> Was it Harley? It was, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I popped into her stream today and, and I you know, I'd never watched her stream before and I, I popped in and she's oh yeah, you're you know, you're interviewing Echo and yeah, she was practicing with, with Doc's like, what? <laughs> it's just like, oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was last week. <laughs> um, we were talking about it because I, um, I was telling him that I was gonna, you know, hop on your podcast yeah. and everything, and he's like, "Okay, well, we got to get you ready. Oh my <laughs> we got to interview you." <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, the questions were much more uh, outlandish than. Oh, I can <laughs> these imagine. Ones, yes, but... yes. <laughs> uh, no, we keep it easy here, laid back. You know, nothing, nothing crazy, nothing wild. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I want perfect. people to come back. I don't want, you know, I don't want to scare people off. So, no. No, no, it's it's amazing. Oh, I love it. Excellent. <laughs> and now, you know, speaking of of Doc and the community, you know, I I my first Daisy sort of full-time streamer I brought on or I had had visit me was Ariana and then Joey Ito. And mm -hmm. it's like there's so many really fun people in that whole community. Yes. Yes. It's huge. I love it. Um I think that is, I mean, maybe I'm biased, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I haven't really been a part of like a ton of other yeah. uh, Twitch communities really, but uh, I feel like Daisy's unique. Yeah. Um, and that was, you know, I had some really great times back in the day, but coming back and not knowing anybody yeah. and meeting so many new people, uh, there's so many great people yeah. out there. And I'm super grateful for everybody that I've met. Nice. And now... Would you say like the community back then has the same <clears throat> has the same vibe and feeling to it as the same the community you're you know, you're in today? Yeah, I would say so. Um, it was smaller then. Yeah, I think um, I would say that nowadays people are probably more interactive with each other. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, there just wasn't as many as many people back then. But I think that people have come together. There's more like team ups mm -hmm. nowadays. Uh, I feel like people back then did team up, but it kind of people kind of stuck to the same groups of people pretty often, yeah. which people do now as well. I mean, mm -hmm. it's inevitable you get your friend groups right. and everything like that. But I've coming back, I've definitely teamed up with more people um, than I ever did back yeah. then, and that's cool to meet different people and interact with them, and that's how you make new friends. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. And now, you know, who do you, you know, do you really run mainly with other people or do you uh, play Daisy and stream uh, solo or do you mix it up? I mostly play with other people. Yeah. Um, when I came back, I played alone a mm -hmm. lot. Uh, and really because I didn't have any friends. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know anybody. Um, but yeah, nowadays I usually have, you know, I, very occasionally I run by myself, which can yeah. definitely lean towards some fun interactions that, you know, meeting up with randoms that you right. wouldn't get otherwise and like maybe like in a team up. Um, but yeah, typically I do team ups and um, there's so much Daisy content right now, just stuff to do. Yeah. Uh, so I usually have, you know, a few different people that will hop on and be like, okay, we're going to continue our adventure on here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I'm, I'm grateful for Excellent. that to have cool people to play with. Very cool. And now Daisy seems like a great game to stream because you have, you know, places where there's action going on, but there's also lulls where you're going from place to place where now you can interact with your chat and sort yes. of, yeah, keep everybody, you know, just keep everybody happy. Yeah. I mean, that's the perfect, you know, you per described it perfectly. I always say that I'm like, Daisy is some, one of the best games to stream because there's so much time to interact and have downtime and also have a little bit of time to breathe too. And yeah. just be able to, you know, have that time with your stream and, and talk to them and everything like that. But then there's times where like, you can't even remotely look at chat and then yeah. but chat's like on the edge of their chair, like what's going <laughs> to happen. And, you know, um, cause I've, you know, I've streamed some other games where 
that's why I feel like for me, like if I streamed like uh, Siege, mm -hmm. like I feel like it was just like a constant, like I'm always in a match and I yeah. can't, there's always something going on. So yeah, Daisy is like the perfect blend of of it. I love it for that. Yeah, because yeah, I, you know, you see like games like Siege or, or you know, Call of Duty. It's just mm -hmm. you can't take your eyes off the screen because you run, run, run and die and you run, you know, run back in. But it's, yeah, there's like no lulls where you can really just, you know, get yeah. to know your community. Yeah, because like really the only downtime, right, is like in between matches. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. But at the same time, you don't want too many in between matches because then you're not playing yeah, the game. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, very true. Yeah. And uh, yeah. what, what is it about DayZ that has its hooks into you? What is makes it special? Oh, man. I was trying to explain this to somebody yesterday. Yeah. Someone came in and said, well, is this game worth it? And... Daisy is sometimes I really struggle to put him put it into words, but the unexpected chaos that can happen mm -hmm. um, is one of the things. The interactions that you have with people just are unlike anything else. Um, I think the organic nature of the game, yeah, where it is just completely open to anything and everything happening. Um, and then, you know, obviously there's there's no wrong way to play the game. So, mm -hmm. you know, some people may not PvP, but I think PvP right. is a huge aspect of it. And I've played so many survival games or FPS games. No game gives me adrenaline like Daisy does. Yeah. And I feel like that's I've heard that from, you know, pretty much everybody I know, like nothing in, compares to a tense situation on Daisy. Like I still get like shaky hands yeah. and I, I have 10,000 hours plus in Daisy mm -hmm. and still I like I'm sweating and yeah. you know, <laughs> it's just really unique. I think it is. And you know, there's, and I think it's, well, I could be totally wrong here, but like, you know, in, when we played, you know, when I play Tarkov, there's the pucker moments. Like, I don't want to die because I got my good, I've got my mm -hmm. good gear. But in DayZ, you don't want to die because, like you said, you've got your stuff that took 10 hours to get this, took time yeah. to get that. And, yeah, it's like the adrenaline because, you know, and then you, you know, you get that headshot or you take out that group. And now, okay. And now it's like, holy cow, like you said, the hands yeah. are shaking and everything like that. Yeah. And that, well, that's like, you know, and that's what I was telling you. Too. I'm like, I think the only other game that would probably give me the adrenaline that Daisy does is yeah. Tarkov. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think I've only played a bit of Tarkov yeah. years ago when it first came out, but I mean, I get on the edge of my seat and sweaty when I watch people play yeah. Tarkov. <laughs> so I can only imagine. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And now, you know, for, you know, for people coming into Daisy, what's, you know, what is some of the hardest things to learn or get your head wrapped around when you're playing the game? What are important things that people should learn? Hmm. I think that I think sometimes uh, I was thinking about this yesterday too. Is that I don't think if if someone who's played Daisy for a long time or consistently plays Daisy may not realize how many nuances the game has mm -hmm. and how hard it can actually be to learn things. Uh, because like when I learned Daisy, it was a much simpler game. Yeah, there was no sicknesses. There, you know, it was vanilla one map. Um, so I think that the biggest hurdles people have are learning the maps. Um, finding food and dealing with like, you know, the sicknesses and just trying to get, yeah. trying to get their character to a point where it's healthy and surviving, you know, not even bringing in the fact that anybody could come around and shoot you at yeah. any point. Um, but I think that there's so many little things that aren't really, there's so many guides, right? So many yeah. people put us like great guides, but there's so many little things that you just don't really know about. Like, um, for example, if you have like dirty hands mm -hmm. or like you or say, or say that you bandage with a bad rag, yeah. right? Um, there's different stages of that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that somebody's brand new, it's really hard to learn those little intricacies of the game because how would you know that you have 15 minutes of a blood infection to use disinfectant? Right. And then once it goes to phase two, you only need Tetra, like. And then people are like, well, why am I, you know, I'm dying. Why am I dying? I have no idea what happened. Yep. Um, so there's so many little things that I think are just so hard to to learn. And there's so many of them yep. that it can be kind of overwhelming. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like when you're handling, you know, dead, ch or, you know, ch uh, dead chickens, like, 
why am I getting sick? Oh, you need to go wash your hands. Like I would never even thought of stuff like that. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Making sure you're drinking good water yes. and, you know, and I mean, still people who play a lot of Daisy, I mean, still sometimes we make the mistake of maybe drinking bad water because you're yeah. just not paying attention. Like, and then from there it completely changes. I mean, and you can make mistakes. Like one time I just wasn't paying attention. I had mm-hmm. raw chicken in my bag Yeah. and I went to go open a can or a, open a box of Winchester rounds and they're yeah. Slightly the same color. They're both like whitish yellow. <laughs> and so I went to go open the Winchester rounds, yeah. but I didn't realize they were next to each other. I pulled out the chicken, ate the chicken, and I was oh my sick, God. and I had no meds. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Such a rookie mistake, oh. but like sometimes, you know, you're just not yeah. really paying attention. And yeah. um, so and then plus there, it's like if you don't have meds, you know, and then you're, you know, tr- then you'd from there have to travel and right. get lucky that you're going to find the medicine and enough that you need. Um, and if you're new to the map and you don't know where to go for those things, it is really easy to die. Yeah. And so I think that when you're new, it's just there's so much happening and um, it can be really hard to uh, to kind of get through all that or yeah. know like the little tiny things. Yeah. Excellent. And now. What would you think or what would you like to see added to the game at this point? Because you've, you know, like you said, you've got thousands of hours into this game. Are there some things that are missing that you would like to see or some things that you would like them to change? I mean, I think that I probably sound like a lot of other DC players (laughs) where I just say I want stuff to be fixed. Yeah. Um, You know, just some there's some stuff that uh I like bug wise and, and there's like ADS bug was something for a really long time mm-hmm. um, that has been fixed to, to like the highest extent that it has been. Um, I I think for me, I'd like to see more like craftable items, like yeah. bringing back the bow, um, some interactive things. Uh, Stalker Z. Have you heard of that at yeah. all? Yeah. I'll say, I'm sure you have Stalker Z. Uh, they did some really, really cool stuff. They have like a hand mechanic where you mm-hmm. can hand someone something. Um, you just hold H and you hold out whatever you have. And I think that stuff like those little things where oh. they're not, you know, maybe game breaking. Like yeah. for me, I really like those little interactive type stuff. Um, and for me, I I really enjoy the more vanilla aspect of the game, the vanilla guns. Yeah. Um, I'm not like super big into like modded weapons and mm-hmm. everything like that. So I I personally just like to see all of that improved upon and then having the more options for um maybe craftable like rain ponchos or craftable like bows mm-hmm. and and stuff like that because I feel like for me I'm content uh with the amount of weaponry and everything that's yeah. in the game. I don't really think that the game needs anything added to that. And I know they've like recently added explosives and stuff like that. Um, I like everything where it is in that aspect. Um, Just smaller, like quality of life things Mm -hmm. that could change like the survival of your character. Yeah. Yeah. I've recently jumped into like, so Daisy has been sitting in my steam library for, I'd say probably three or four years. And I didn't really fire it up until uh, Ariana was on and the passion she had about that game made me jump into it. And I was like, Mm -hmm. what a wonderful game, but I had no idea there was landmines and it was like the Christmas (laughs) tree event. I'm like, Oh, open this box. And I blew, I was like, Oh my God, what is, yeah, it was crazy. All this stuff you Mm -hmm. guys. Yeah. What a great game. You always remember when you step on a landmine or like a (laughs) transport. (laughs) Yep. <laughs> don't forget <laughs> yeah yep. no it's um yeah i mean i feel like when you have people who play daisy they're very passionate about yep. the game because it is a very unique game and i had wanted i had this idea for a while of having like a community thing of uh, because people ask like why daisy you know like that person yesterday what, what is this game good mm-hmm. should i buy it and Sometimes you can't really put it into words of of how, why we all love it so much. Um, and I wanted to kind of put, like, together a video of yeah. just, like, random stuff that happens or, like, the craziness of it all and being like, like, why do we play Daisy? you know? Yeah. Because it's just, I mean, there's been stuff I do in Daisy where I go on this, like, crazy adventure and I meet this awesome person yeah. and... You know, it's like it's almost like an emotional day. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. It's just it, it's a really, really awesome experience. Yeah. Like I, I was up in a tower and I was like, you know, nobody knew I was up there. And I saw like a 2v2 team hook up and it was just like 
it was like, you know, the way they just like, I think one group had no real weapons and they were just annihilated the, oh my God. It was like, it was brutal to watch. It was like, holy crap. It was like, you know, watching an episode of Walking Dead or something. It was, yeah, yeah it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Now, what kind of servers do you like to play on? Like you said, you know, you like the vanilla style or there's, you know, certain maps you like to play over the other or because you have such a variety, that's what, you know, makes it interesting. Yeah, I I like the um I guess you maybe call it vanilla plus. Yeah. Um but mostly vanilla guns, maybe like a couple quality of life mods like a scope mod. Yeah. Uh that adds more, some more scopes for the guns and stuff. Um I the communities that I typically play in are Zero. Mm -hmm. Um they host a few different servers and that's like probably the main servers that I play on along with Day 1. Yeah. Um there's some really great community run uh, servers out there and um you know they maybe do unique things for their server um like living dead is is one and yeah. ogt runs hard home they you know they have their own like twist on things maybe they'll add like a little bit harder zombies mm -hmm. uh but stuff like that i i love the the maps that have objectives mm -hmm. uh is tech is one of my favorite maps um and the creator of is tech Zarge, he actually is working on a new map that's pretty close to being ready uh, but you have to go find an item and then you have to find another item and then you have to craft something with oh, those cool. and then it opens a secret door and um stuff like that is so cool to yeah. me because we used to just run around on trenaris for you know with no mm -hmm. real objective so i love those so much because then if you're playing on a full server it also creates poi hotspots for people yes. to fight and it, that risk reward of like oh my gosh i've got all this stuff yeah you know but i know there's going to be people here type thing you know that's that's where it gets really, really fun for yeah. me. Oh, excellent. And it's, it's in the last year, there seems to really be a resurgence, like the daisy mm -hmm. activity. There's all sorts of things happening, it seems. Yeah, yeah. It, there's a, it's crazy because, you know, DZ is hitting like new, you know, records for like player count. Yeah. And, you know, you see a lot of people come in and check it out. And um, the variety, because there's no, the beauty of it too is like there's no wrong way to play Daisy. Like you know, yep. personally, like I said, I like the more vanilla guns. But you know, if you want to go and play on a PVE server, you could. If you want to yep. play on more like vanilla plus some, you can. Or if you want to play on a super modded server, you can. So I feel like Daisy has become it. It's growing because there's so much creativity for mm -hmm. the people who mod, like from them. Yeah. That there's kind of a version of Daisy for everybody. Yeah. And, you know, in the over in the Tarkov side of things, when Tarkov, Tarkov goes and wipes and we're on, we're mm. on the tail end of the wipe or something's not going right in the Tarkov space, there seems to be a lot of the, the Tarkov community jumped over to Daisy. We had, you know, Deadly Slob goes back there. Mr. Yeah. Gibbons now is playing it a whole lot. And it's just... I saw that. Yeah, yeah. It's so cool to see. Seeing It's nice seeing other people coming in and just, you know, loving that game, seeing, you know, and Agreed. seeing newer people come in and play it. I like to see it too because, regardless of how long Daisy's been around, um, even just in the standalone sense, I yeah. feel like a lot of people don't realize just how much fun you can mm -hmm. have on Daisy. So they come over and they're like, "Oh my gosh, I had the craziest interaction! Nice. Like it was so cool!" Yeah. And I just think that's awesome. Yeah, and and also it seems like you know all sorts of events are being created and ran by different people. And I saw you know when I was doing some you know background on you i saw you were one of the first or you were part of the winning team for the queens of the castle event yeah yeah it was awesome yeah we were the in the first queens of the castle yes yeah, yeah. and yeah. how how was that i love it yeah um and i'm so grateful especially for queens because i love seeing a space for like you know to show how many women yep just are badass <laughs> right yes <laughs> and then yeah. play daisy um because back in the day there wasn't very many many women in the space yeah. um so to see that there is enough awesome women to have a whole event for it like yeah. that's just incredible absolutely and that actually re brings me into the next question you know i see you're mm -hmm. you know you have the ladies of daisy which you know do you want to talk about that yeah i I'm just super grateful. And, you know, most of the people that I play with are women. And yep. um, I, I'm i super, super grateful for it because I think that 
just over time, like it's it's hard to find your space, mm-hmm. like or your spot as a you know as a lady in any gaming community. Yeah. Um, and it just goes, you know, the fact that we have our own team and we have events and everything like that. It just really goes to show how many of us are there and we enjoy the game and we're just as capable of, you know, yeah. doing everything else. And um, everybody in the community is so nice. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we're all supportive of each other. And I think that is just it's super important because, yeah. um, you know, at playing and, and, you know, I feel like. It happens in every game. I know it's especially bad and like COD and stuff like yeah. that, but it could be tough to oh, be yeah. a woman. And mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I've I've had it on stream where I run into someone, they say terrible things to yeah. me. And I know all of us have dealt with it at some point, and it's very disheartening. Um, and I I feel like I've got decently thick skin, but yeah. I mean, there was a time maybe like I don't know, maybe ten months ago where. I ran into someone, they said some terrible things to me, and I just, you know, everybody's, I'm only human, we're all right. human, I just broke. Yep. I he- cried, <laughs> I ended stream, and, Ugh. you know, it's so hard to have that happen, but I feel like if we have, you know, the the group of, of ladies, you know, we all kind of have each other's back yep. on that sort of stuff, yeah. right? So, yeah. It, it's, I just don't get why there's, you know, there's people out there like that. I really, you know, what? What do you get out of that? It's just, yeah, it's just, it's. I know. Yeah. But over, and it still happens so much, unfortunately. Yeah, it is. I had you know a, a hunt streamer on last week, and she was telling about how you know somebody came into chat and was just saying some some stuff you would never say to anybody mm-hmm. unless you know you just yeah it just it's really disheartening. It's awful. Yeah, yeah. definitely. But over on the um, in the Tarkov space, we have there's a similar uh, there's a, a streamer Nixia, and she created what they call the Chatettes, which is sort of like the Ladies of Daisy. So it's an all women sort of Discord and group that, you know what they sort of keep you know they got each other's backs. You know they sort of share information like you know there's yeah I had this guy in my stream today just heads up and they just you know it's mm-hmm. it's just I think it's cool there's things like that and and the Ladies of Daisy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean it's. Um... It, it just it, it it's nice to have that safe space yeah. and um, you know help each other with situations because you know if something happens you know, we have the discord and yeah. you know it's saying like hey you know just you know nothing really makes you feel better yeah. after you have something like that happen to you but to know that you're not alone and the people that right. maybe are experiencing the same thing like you're there for each other and yeah. that um, it's just it's nice to have a space for all of us yeah. and yeah yeah like i have a couple of daughters and if they jumped into that game knowing that they could just find a discord where it's and have you know not be intimidated and know they can go there and, and just you know talk to other girls about mm-hmm. the you know the daisy and advice and it's just it's a, yeah. such a good thing yeah i completely agree yeah. and now you're also part of another team the survivors what's that one yes. all about yeah, so I got invited to Survivors maybe like a year ago, um, and it was started by Running Man um, a few years back. Yeah, and you know it's just a, a group of like-minded people who you know primarily just play Daisy and you know enjoy the survival games and the survival of Daisy. And um, I was I'm very grateful to to be a part of that too because I. You know, I, Running Man is, you know, a huge inspiration to so many of us who are in the community. Yeah. And now it's run by Amish Zed. And same thing with him, you know, just great people who are great influences to the Daisy community. And yeah. they're great, um, you know, stable people of the game that we love. You know, we're all passionate about it. And to have people who, you know, have that like minded, just passion for the game and yeah. content creation and the survival genre in general. Yeah. Very cool. Hey, and, speak, yeah. speaking of Amish Zed, you know, Joe Ito was on, and she yeah. said he does some controversial stuff with some rags. He wears the rag shoes or something like that that lets <laughs> him be very quiet. Like, what is your, you know, which side of the fence do you take? Are you, you know, you're okay with oh, his, no. <laughs> his slippers? Or like, come on, Amish, you know better than that. I know Joe hates that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm not innocent in the ish slider department. Yeah, the ish sliders, say, that's right. That's yeah. what they were. I'm not I'm not a hundred percent innocent. Um they got nerfed. Yeah. 
Awesome. The ish sliders aren't as strong as they were. I'm okay. not innocent. I have worn them. Yeah. Um, but I'm not a very active ish slider user. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Oh. And now, you know, when somebody's coming into your stream for the first time, what are they expecting? How would you describe your stream to people who are, you know, popping in for the first time? Mm, I would then I would say a positive space. Yeah. Um, where people can feel like, I mean, I'm not, I, you know, I'm not completely innocent of maybe, you know, complaining about something that yeah. we all complain sometimes, humans. but yeah, we're humans, but I feel like, you know, a, a more a, a positive space where people can come and hang out and feel like they have a place where they belong and feel like they're part of the community. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, interactive with everybody, no pressure to feel like anybody has to sub or tip or yeah. anything to be included. Um, you know, so a place where they can come in and find content that is, uh, you know, I try to, I really push to, to PvP. It's something yeah. I really, really enjoy. Um, so they can come and see, you know, shenanigans yeah. where stupid stuff is happening or we're doing stupid things or singing Backstreet Boys or something. <laughs> but along, it's like mixed in with high intense PVP moments, I guess is probably the best way to explain it. Yeah. I've seen yeah. you, I've seen some clips of you, you know, taking out some guys that like, you know, with great headshots. <laughs> like, holy God, how did you, you pull that off? Uh, I just, I, yeah, I love, I love the, the, the PVP and Daisy. Yeah. Um, that's, I mean, that's kind of how I've always played Daisy. Mm -hmm. is just PvP focused. Yeah. Um, so that is, you know, what I really mostly try to excel at in Daisy. Like yeah. I, I play, you know, V plus plus off off stream, and um, and obviously that's not all of it because I think that it's a huge part of Daisy. But mm -hmm. um, so many of the things that the randomness of Daisy, like yesterday, I laughed so hard. I almost like, I don't know, I cried. Um, and I feel like this is something that makes Daisy unique, even though it's because the game was broken. Um, my friend, my friend Bobby and I were on a motorcycle. And for whatever reason, uh, it like the server desynced to where yeah. I was on the motorcycle or like where we were and where he was. And I was driving it, and I was like, yeah, this is going so smooth. I was like, oh, my God, I'm such a good driver. And he's like, you're crashing? I was like, no, I'm not. Like, everything is good. What are you talking about? And I'm just, like, driving down the road. He's like, you're crashing? I was like, no, I'm good. And then I was like, what are you doing? I get off the motorcycle, and I turn around, and he's upside down in the ground in the motorcycle. And I watched his perspective. Yeah. And we were crashing into trees. We were crashing oh into God. holes. <laughs> it was like stuff like that only happens in Daisy. I feel yeah. like where it's so broken, but stuff like that is just so random, chaotic, and funny. And I feel like that's what people love on stream too, right? Just having having the the craziness of Daisy. Like anything can happen. I feel like that's why a lot of people watch it oh, as well. Neat. Even though that's not PvP, it's just us crashing right. on a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> And now, have you met any of them in real life? Have you at Twitch cons or anything like that? No, but we're going to TwitchCon this year. Oh, awesome. In Vegas? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. going to be crazy. Awesome. Yeah. So hopefully I get to meet a good amount of people. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. I've had, you know, this past TwitchCon, I've had a bunch of people on and talk about their experience. And because that was like the first TwitchCon, you know, post COVID and whatnot for in the, in the U.S. anyway. And a lot of them, you know, they started streaming, you know, during COVID. So their TwitchCon was like they were there in two roles. One, mm -hmm. they were there viewing their, you know, their, you know, not idols, but just like, holy cow, they're stars. And then they'd turn around and here they are with their community looking at them in that role. And it was like, it was a mm -hmm. unique experience. And I'm sure yeah. this is going to be for you. You know, you've got your community people seeing you and then you turn around, it's like, holy cow, there's like, like lyric or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I miss conventions a lot. Yeah. Um, I went to the first, few twitch cons and then i didn't go um i think maybe like 2019 2018 and then everything happened yeah. with the pandemic so then there was no conventions and now that i'm back and you know there's conventions are back again yeah. i um they're just for me personally conventions i think that everything that goes on in them are great you know it's so cool to see the booths yeah. and the panels but I, I like to go just for the people. <laughs> that's 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 what it sounded yeah. like. Everybody who was in San Diego, just that was the highlight of just 
outside of the convention, the experiences after, you know, after the, they left the convention center. Yeah. 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 Because you get to, you know, regardless if it's people that you play with, or like you said, that you look up to, Mm -hmm. um, or it's, you know, meeting people who've been in your stream and you get to like interact face to face and stuff like that is so cool. And it's just, I, I truly think that some of the best friends come from people you meet online and, yeah. you know, you've got people from all over the world that you all, ha- you know, you enjoy the same things, you have the same passions yeah. and we're brought together by something that maybe we wouldn't normally be friends otherwise. So it's so cool to be able to meet those people and actually talk to them. And yeah, I miss it. So I'm, I'm really excited for TwitchCon Excellent. this year. Any other events you're looking forward to this year? Um, yeah, I mean, outside events, I'm just going, just doing TwitchCon, yeah. but, um, that's, uh, I mean, the Daisy events, yeah. you know, otherwise, cause I'm always excited for those, but, uh, yeah, otherwise I'm just a hermit. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about from a Daisy event standpoint, anything coming up that you're like, wow, this is going to be a fun one. Um, I mean, we just had, you know, we had War of the Survivors, mm-hmm. War of the Women, um, obviously, you know, Queens of the Castle will have again, yeah. so that's exciting. Any HB events, any Happy Bombs events are always really, really great. Yeah. Um, so, cause that was, um, my first event ever was, um, the, uh, Happy Bombs event and True Colors. That was, uh, that was the first event I ever did. Yeah. And that was, I think like two months, maybe of me coming back to streaming and that was such a cool experience, and that was a huge opportunity for me to meet new people yeah. um, that I wouldn't normally maybe have met. And that's how I met Doc, how I met Sarge, and uh, you know, getting teamed up with people that maybe you don't normally play with or mm-hmm. haven't interacted with. Uh, so I'm really, yeah, I love those events because nice. they're, you know, make your heart pound. You know, yeah. they're very high intensity, but then you also get to meet cool people. That's sweet, awesome. And now, any uh, any sponsors or anything like that you want to give a shout out to? Uh, yeah, so my sponsors are Madrina's, uh, this really, really amazing coffee. Um, they do like cold brew coffees or whole bean coffees and I'm a caffeine addict, so (laughs) (laughs) I'm grateful for them because they're delicious. Um, so I work with Madrina's, they're really great. Uh, I actually found out about them years and years and years ago at TwitchCon, so it's really cool to see that they're still going around their smaller company. Um, the co-owner and co-founder is, um, also a streamer. So yeah. they're really engaged with the Twitch community, which I think is awesome. Oh, nice. Um, and then Astro, uh, slash Logitech. They're yeah. always super supportive and I work with them still. So yeah, big love Excellent. to them. Awesome. All right. So now when you sign off, you're not streaming, you know, what do you do away from, you know, you said you're a hermit, but you know, there's gotta be some things you do outside. <laughs> yeah. Um, outside, uh, well, I have a new nephew coming. Mm-hmm. Nice. So my sister is having her third child. So soon I'll have another uh, nephew yeah. and I, I hang out with my nieces and nephews. My uh, oldest nephew is getting into video games. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. He's, uh, he's five. Yeah. About to be five. And, um, so right now I'm, we're trying to, you know, get him into, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's really interested in video games. Um, and then aside from that, you know, hang out with family and, um, also, you know, I play a lot of games, uh, off stream too. So what do you enjoy? World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft. I do that still. Um, people are probably going to laugh, but I love power wash simulator. (laughs) 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 Simulation games. They're so good. Yep. Uh, Those are my chill games. Sometimes nice. like, man, I just really, you know, long day. I just really want to power yep. wash something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was a, yeah. Tar- you know, one of my, uh, one of the people I've been on, uh, Tardox, uh, that's how he used to end his night was after playing Tarkov for the entire stream, he'd fire power wash and, and people would just, you know, come in mm-hmm. and chat. And it's like you said, it's just this chill Zen, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Satisfying. You yep. know, it's, I love it. I love uh, it so much. So yeah, I love games like that. And then. You know, with the friend group, we, you know, we'll play some other stuff. Right now I'm playing uh, this weekend the D4 beta or the yeah. early access. Mm-hmm. So, nice. yeah. All right. Well, thank you for doing this. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time and sharing your story. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. It was really, really cool. I'm, I'm super grateful for the opportunity. Thank you.